Welcome to the Anywhere Classroom, Episode 2. Today we're in Gunnison, Colorado, a small town in the Rockies, where we will show you how to use the Olympus OMD to take great wildlife shots. And who better to show you how to do just that than Olympus visionary and National Geographic photographer Jay Dickman. Jay continuously travels around the world photographing wildlife in some of the most remote locations on Earth. Let's go check it out. Thanks, Becky. We're here in Colorado. It's my home state. It's one of my favorite places to photograph uh, wildlife. What I love about photographing wildlife is it's all about moment. It's about watching for the nature of the animal, the behavior of the animal. Uh, and when you're photographing wildlife, kind of the three components that are so important are patience, patience, and patience. You really have to absorb yourself into the moment. It may take hours sometimes to get that right image. And what I love about that, the Olympus OMD EM1, is that camera's with me all the time. The old saw goes, you know, what's the best camera to have? It's the one that's in your hands when you need it. And that's what I love about this equipment. This camera is weather resistant, and it's so darn lightweight that I've got it with me at all times. I shot sports for many years, and the old rule of thumb there was when you really wanted to start stopping action, you needed one five hundredth of a second. That's when you you started eliminating shutter drag. The OMD M1's a great wildlife camera. It has a shutter speed up to eight thousandths of a second when you really want to stop those hummingbird wings, the cheetah running by, whatever you're looking for. And I could shoot some at a slower shutter speed, and what happens then is you start to create a filtered effect. Again, almost an impressionistic painting. But I can also then ramp it up to that eight thousandth of a second if I want to. It's a clean picture. This looks just delightful. I've been in situations like this where I've stood here for hours waiting for the, the light, waiting for the subject. Some days you have one of those days where you don't see much. Let's see what we see tomorrow. Yeah, we're watching some birds flying around here and I'm trying to grab one so I can get focus on it and watch it as it goes through. It's really one of the tricks when you're shooting wildlife is to obtain your target and try to stay with it. But sometimes it's just trying to find that darned animal. I'll tell you one trick a lot of wildlife photographers use, and that's setting up the back button, the AFL button, as your autofocus button. So when I'm watching that wildlife flying across, I'm pressing this button back here, it's capturing focus, and then my shutter button strictly releases a shutter. So that I'm not shifting focus, I'm gaining focus, holding it, holding it, holding it, changing it, shooting when I need to. It's a great tip for wildlife photography. Birds are tough, they're fast. And for those aspiring photographers, go a little bit wider, give it more room so that so you have room in which to capture it in the frame. Don't try to be so close, so tight, because it's so easy for that bird to fly out of the frame. So it is a dance you're going through. You're trying to make let everything come together so that you've got the exposure down, you've got the focus down, and you get the moment. I'm out here photographing in Colorado these horses in early morning light. I've been talking about shooting high shutter speeds to freeze the action. Today we're just going to go the opposite. We're going to go to a slow shutter speed and then I'm going to pan with the horses as they go by. And when you try panning, you've got to make sure that you're moving with the horses. Don't stop the camera because your background will be sharp and the horses will be blurred. But by panning with them, will give that beautiful blur, that impressionistic look, of that motion, spinning, just stuff out of control. But it's gonna allow you in, to get just enough focus, enough sharpness, that it'll give your eye somewhere to fall upon. So we're waiting for these horses to run. They're gonna do what they wanna do. Here they come. One of the great benefits of the OMD EM1 is its capability of going up to 10 frames per second on burst mode. Oh, that was nice, that was nice. That was beautiful, watching that light change as they ran past, you'd see the flare of the light coming in, and the, the hush running by, and the horses passing each other. That was just lovely. And thing to think about, wherever you are, you can do this. Photograph your own life. If you want to photograph nature, get out and practice. Don't just go out into the field 
on an expensive trip without having practice beforehand. Go down to the park, photograph your dog chasing the ball, catching the frisbee. If you have a kid playing soccer, photograph that. So when you walk out into the field, you're not caught unawares. To learn more about what you can do with the Olympus OMD series, visit getolympus.com backslash anywhere classroom.